Okay. So for biochemistry, uh, I would like to emphasize your primary source of information is always going to be textbooks. And the two most important textbooks that I think for biochemistry are uh, Lippincott and the second is Satya Narayan. Lippincott, I personally think, is extremely easy to understand. It has all those uh, diagrams that make it really easy to understand. And Satya Narayan is, for certain topics, I always prefer Satya Narayan. For example, the amino acid chapter, it is beautifully written there. And uh, the moment I did uh, the amino acid chapter from Satya Narayan, I, was, I, I never had to do it again. It made me, uh, I crammed it from there, I memorized it. And whenever I needed to do anything related to amino acids, amino acid is, a, is something that is tested a lot. So I never had any difficulty doing that. So I would just uh, I would just uh, emphasize to do uh, your amino acids from Satya Narayan and the rest of the thing from uh, Lippincott. Just just do whatever you think is easier for you. Okay. The second thing is there are certain enzyme defects and there are certain enzyme deficiencies that are asked in your USMLE step one and also in your um, universities. Obviously, that's what biochemistry is. So you have to make sure that you're not just cramming the enzyme defects. You have to make sure that you know what happens to the person when the enzyme is deficient. For example, let's just say that uh, there's an enzyme that is deficient in the heme synthesis pathway. So what's going to happen? There's going to be no heme. They're never going to ask you what's not forming. They're going to give you a scenario of anemia, or probably they're going to ask you that they gave going to give you a scenario that someone shifted to a house where they were using old paints. So the paint was there, which means it was an old house. There must have been lead in that paint, and that lead was affecting the heme synthesis pathway, and that led to the anemia. So that's how you're supposed to clinically correlate it. They don't want you to memorize the pathway. They want you to know what happens if an enzyme of that pathway is deficient. So know that and clinically try to correlate that. And then there is this, uh, this topic of genetics that is often neglected by students. And I personally, I think that I neglected it when I was in my first year or in second year. Uh, to be honest, in first year, I was told that you'll study that in your second year. And in second year, they thought that we had already done our genetics. But that wasn't the case. And I really struggled in genetics when I came to doing USMD step. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, you struggled as well in genetics. Yeah. But the thing is, it's better to do genetics at the right time because when you're doing biochemistry as a whole, genetics forms up a very major part of it. And uh, if you're having any trouble doing genetics, I highly recommend do BNB for that, both and beyond. Uh, the beautiful, they beautifully explain what what genetics is, how what's going to happen, the re reproduction of bacteria, and everything like that. Everything is there, and I highly recommend that you genetic that you do genetics from both and beyond. And uh, I think there isn't much uh, to say about biochemistry, but these are some of the things that I think you must remember uh, when it comes to doing biochemistry. And uh, now, I mean, I think let's move on to physio physiology. If there's anything, I'll just add in the end. Okay, so physiology is, physiology as a subject is something that is considered to be quite easy. Okay, so most students, they find physiology quite easy as compared to biochemistry and as compared to anatomy, and they have to dedicate less time to this. And the reason for that is the textbook for physiology is absolutely wonderful. So, okay, so there's always going to be only one textbook that I recommend for physiology, and that is Guyton. Okay, so we all know what Guyton is, and it is a wonderful textbook in order for you to understand physiology. Now, the thing to remember about this is if you are thinking of giving step one in first year and second year, and you want to give it later on during your fourth year or whenever that is, then your physiology has to be very strong during those first two years of MBBS. And the reason is that your physiology is going to form the basis of your understanding for pathology. Okay, so your physiology is going to equal how well you do with pathology because physiology is understanding what the normal mechanisms are and pathology is going to be well if there's something wrong with that mechanism what is going to happen so for third and fourth year it's essential you have a good base of, of physiology a good foundation and a good understanding of physiology that's very important to understand guidance is the best resource you can use please do the chapters properly do not leave anything i know sometimes you have uh, certain resources that say that there are chapters you can leave out. I remember that there was one related to exercise uh, to uh, exercise and sports sport medicine. Sports medicine, yeah. sports medicine and exercise that we were told to leave out by um, some of our uh, colleagues. And the thing is that that chapter was actually very important in understanding and building upon step one knowledge. And that's because you don't know what, well, you know what a normal mechanism of someone uh, in their day-to-day -day life would be, but you don't know that someone that's in uh, that sports 
इस इस बात को काट ना इस बात को काट ना अच्छा Okay, so that sports medicine chapter is very essential, and the reason for that is that you need to know what the body does in order to adapt to certain situations, with exercise being one of them. So I strongly recommend that you do not leave any chapters for physiology and do them well and do them um, extensively from Guyton. Yes, I know there are a few short review books that you uh, that people use because they have good summaries, but again, those review books are not your primary textbook; they are just review books. So remember that as well. For your exam. Use them for your modules or whatever exams you have yes. in your universities. Just yes. and that too before your exam, not like entirely. And also, I would like to emphasize: uh, uh, I want the people to do uh, CVS properly when they're doing their physiology, because I think cardiovascular system makes up the whole chunk of physiology when it comes to step yeah. one. So that's that's yeah. an, and those adaptations that you mentioned. I remember there were so many questions related mm. to that. There were, there were loads. Yes, CVS is very important in physiology. You need to make sure because that leads to the pathology section, and it's a huge section. And you do struggle with that if your physiology isn't that great. But I think personally for both of us, because our physiology was quite good and Guyton was a resource that we used, we didn't struggle that much when we're doing step one. Yes, with biochemistry, genetics, we left out. So that's something that we regret, obviously. But and physiology that are related to a uh, renal system, right? So you have mm -hmm. to do renal. Oh, CVS yes. is always going to yes. the renal system, so you have to do renal. Yeah, so, yes, your uh, there's there's not one system that is more important to the other because they're all interlinked. So every single system that you do in first year and second year, you have to do it well, and you have to make sure you're understanding. And another thing to add on is that, yes, I know Guyton has a lot of text, but that text is very important in the sense that each line in each paragraph has something to say. So you want to make sure you understand each line in each paragraph. It's not um, useless information. It's very, very important. And another thing that you can do is please use diagrams. Use diagrams, use visuals, use videos, and use uh, your 3D models or anything like that that you can to understand um, physiology as well as you can. So that's everything that I have to say regarding I just want to give a quick example. Um, uh, I always had a hard time remembering how the neuromuscular junction worked. So I opened YouTube and I and there were a lot of animations about that, how the nerve potential came, how calcium went inside, and then the synaptic vesicles, they, uh, the neurotransmitters, they went to the synaptic left, and then they would activate the postsynaptic uh, uh, post membrane. So just whatever you don't understand in physiology use youtube seriously just use youtube there are a lot of animations and animations are the best way of understanding what's hap what's really happening and they build the best of your concepts and from what you just said regarding nmjs i've just realized that physiology it not only ties in with pathology it actually ties in quite well with pharmacology as well so that's two subjects that you will be needing a good physiology understanding for and um, again physiology if you do not know what the normal uh, the normal condition of a human being is you, if you do not know the normal functioning of a human body, then you will never be able to understand what what the disease is and what pathology is. So for pathology, for pharmacology, for medicine, for surgery, all of this depends on your understanding of physiology. So for me personally, this is a very, very high yield subject, but it's actually the easiest one. So don't worry about uh, getting it covered. Just follow this advice and I'm sure you'll be OK. So to conclude in the end, I would just like to say that if you're in your first year or your second year and you think that uh, um, you you have a plan to do your USMLE step one and step two and then uh, work in the USA, I would just say just keep on following what your university is teaching you, but just try to use the right resources. If you're using the right resources, you're actually preparing for your exam. Physiology, pharmacology, it's always going to be the same in different countries. You just, you just have to make sure that you're studying from the right resources and you're focusing on the right areas but that, like we have just told in the video if you just if you just keep on wasting your time on stuff that is not important or not clinically relevant it will not make sense at all you'll be good for your usmle step one step two and whatever comes your way so thank you everyone thank you for watching this video uh don't forget to subscribe to us and don't forget to follow us on instagram uh we'll see you in another video if you have any sort of feedback or any questions just let us know in the comments or uh, you can also message us on our instagram pages so that's all for today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.